Welcome back. We just talked to Yvette. So next up is this gentleman over here. Good evening, sir. My name is Laura Bow. I am Ramses Najia, Miss Bow. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Ramses Najir, we've heard some things about him. Apparently he likes to ask weird Egyptian riddles. But that's about all we know, and he's accountant here at the museum. So let's question him. Sam Augustini. I'm afraid I do not know Mr. Augustini. I live a very quiet life, and I do not know very many famous people. Not sure if I would call him famous exactly. Dr. Carter. A thousand curses on that man. He defiled the tombs of my sacred ancestors for his own personal glory. He doesn't care a fig for what's right and what's wrong. His own evil deeds will catch up with him, though. Just wait and see. Okay. Just like the man we saw disembarking from the boat. He is not happy with Dr. Carter and his taking Egyptian treasures. Seems to be common among the Egyptians in this game. Of which there are only two, so... Anyway. Dr. Carrington. I have heard a great deal about Mr. Carrington, but I do not know him very well. We have only spoken once or twice, but he seems like a cultured, charming fellow. All right. Detective O'Reilly. To be perfectly honest, I do not care for Mr. O'Reilly. I do not think he sees the beauty in ancient Egypt. He has somewhat blunted his approach to others as well. I suppose that is just part of his job, however. I guess so. Seems like a fair appraisal of the man. How about Rube? Crab follows? No, thank you. I try to restrict my intake of sugar. It has a bad effect on me. I guess that was rather a long shot. Low fat. I'm afraid I do not know the gentleman. I lead a rather solitary life. Just me and my little family. Okay, fair enough. John Bow. John Bow is your father? I have never had the pleasure of meeting him. I have never been to New Orleans, you see. That much humidity does not agree with me. You and me both. I guess our father is kind of famous. As a police detective. If he has at least heard of him. How about Ziggy? Apparently you were asking him weird riddles. I do not know Ziggy very well, but he makes me uneasy. His eyes remind me of a jackal's. I met him briefly at the party, then avoided him the rest of the time. He does have very shifty eyes. Dr. Miklos. Dr. Miklos is a brilliant individual. But he is certainly a little strange. Ah oh, well, we all have our foibles, don't we, Miss Bow? True enough, I guess. Yvette. Miss Yvette is a charming young lady, and so friendly. She seems genuinely interested in Egyptology. We had a long discussion about tombs one time. I'm sure discussion is the right word to use there. Although I'm sure it used very little words. I find Mr. Heimlich to be most intimidating. He seems to enjoy looming over people. Being intimidating does seem to be his goal. How about himself? Why, I am Ramsey's Nadir, Miss Bow. I am an accountant and a proud father of two and a half. 
I'm going to assume that means your wife is pregnant. Do you know the Countess? The Countess is quite a colorful lady. She seems to enjoy life to the fullest, does she not? Just between you and me, she scares me a little. Why is that, Mr. Najia? Well, she's just too enthusiastic for me, I suppose. Okay, the Countess is apparently a scary lady. We've heard from multiple sources now. Makes me very interested to actually meet her. Do you know Steve? Mr. Dorian is a very healthy looking young man. His mother must have eaten well. Is that how that works? Do you read the Tribune? I enjoy the Tribune very much, Miss Bow. I read the financial page every morning of my life. Because you're an accountant? Is that why? How about the police station? The police are useless. It is not the police who will uncover the thief of the dagger. It will be his own evil deeds turned back on him like an angry cobra. Hmm. His reaction to Dr. Carter made me think like he might be a suspect, but... If he also reacts that way to the idea of the theft, maybe not. Or it could just all be an act, I don't know. At this point, we really don't know who we can trust. How about the laundry? I personally do not use that laundry, Miss Bow. I go to an Egyptian laundry on 44th Street. They are wonderful with linens. I'll keep that in mind, I guess, if I ever need to get my laundry done in 1920s New York. The docks. Oh, dear. The docks are very rough places, Miss Bow. I stay away from them. I would suggest that you do the same. Attractive young ladies like yourself are the favorite prey of the jackals who prowl there at night. So everyone keeps telling us. Didn't seem too bad the one time we went there. We didn't go there at night though, so I guess that helps. The museum. The Lion Decker is a beautiful museum, Miss Bow, but I do not approve of the spoiling of my ancestors' tombs much less the wanton display of their bodies and their personal effect. That does seem kind of insensitive, doesn't it? How about this city? Do you like the city of New York, Mr. Najia? Well, it is a very lucrative place for an accountant to set up shop, but the city itself is rather large and frightening. I guess that it is. You ever been to a speakeasy? I wouldn't know, Miss Bow. I am a family man, and I do not frequent such scandalous places. Good on you. How about your year? Mr. Najia, would you say that 1926 has been a good year for you? Well, yes, I would have to say so. Business in America is booming, and many people need an accountant. I have not wanted for work, and my beloved wife Isis is soon to deliver our third child. I suppose I am as happy as a man should be. Congratulations on the upcoming blessed event, Mr. Najia. What are your other children's names? Well, there's Horus and Amon, and the new baby shall be named Anubis after the wife and just Lord of the Dead. Oh, how lovely. But what if the child is a girl? The name shall be Anubis either way. It is a wonderful name for either a boy or a girl. Well, I guess it is equally wonderful for either a boy or a girl. It's just the degree of that wonderfulness to which we might disagree. I think I skipped over things, didn't I? Yes, I did. So let's ask him about our notebook. 
I see you carry a notebook. I carry one too, in case I should think of some particularly exciting mathematical formula at an inconvenient time. You lead an exciting life, don't you? How about the magnifying glass? How interesting. You carry a magnifier. Are your eyes poor? I am very nearsighted myself. It came from years of looking at tiny little numbers. Nope, that's not why I carry that. How about the water glass? Sometimes I carry a water glass with me as well, Miss Bo. One had to be sure to drink enough water in the wilds of Egypt, and I never quite got out of the habit. Wouldn't a water bottle or tankard or something that actually contains water be more useful than a glass in that case? Unless you're just carrying a full glass of water, but then you have to be very careful that you keep it upright the whole time. What do you think of the burglary? Not very uh, happy about it, I would guess. Mr. Najia, would you have any idea who might have stolen the dagger of Amon Ra? No. But whoever did should be boiled alive. He should be fed to hungry crocodiles. His guts should be strung from the pyramids. He should... Oh, excuse me. I get a little passionate on the subject. Quite all right, Mr. Najia. I understand. Maybe a little too passionate. Well, you are Egyptian. I don't know if you know much about Egyptology, though. Are you an Egyptologist, Mr. Najia? No, not professionally. I have always been interested in the history of my country and made a point of studying it. I am particularly interested in ancient Egyptian religions. Well, that is very interesting. And that's everything, actually. All right, one more person to go in, in this group, anyway. Yeah, there's even more people than this. Don't worry, this won't be the rest of the game. We'll move on to actually doing stuff once we're finished talking to all these people here. Good evening, Dr. Carrington. Good evening, Miss Bow. Good evening. Good evening. It's one of the nicest conversations we've had all night. Let's question him. Our editor? I'm afraid I don't know the gentleman. Well, he did just arrive in America, so... That's not that surprising, I guess. You do know Dr. Carter. The fellow has quite an overinflated ego. But he's got a legitimate reason for it, I suppose. True, I guess. I'd be more interested in um, the fact that you knew him from way back, but didn't seem to recognize him. Can't ask him about that, though. How about himself? Well, that's me, young lady. Dr. Archibald Carrington III, at your service. Okay. Good to know. Have you had any dealings with O'Reilly? No, oh, he's a good enough chap for a law enforcement peon. I guess, do you don't have any comments about how he's handling the burglary? I guess not. How about Rube? I'm not acquainted with the chap. Well, at least you recognize it as a name, so that's already uh, one up on most people. Do you by any chance know Lofat? I've never even seen the chap. I guess not. How about John Bow? I've never met your father, Miss Bow, but I have a deep respect for the minions who uphold the law. Maybe not call them minions then. How about Ziggy? Miss Bow, I find it vaguely offensive that you would even think that I know anyone named Ziggy. I guess that is uh, not unfair. Dr. Miklos. 
Dr. Miklos is one of the museum's most respected curators. Albert Yvette. I am, uh, I really haven't had much interaction with Miss Delacroix. Well, of course, she is my assistant. So I guess I should correct myself and say that I do have, inter uh, uh, I mean, interaction with her. But I don't know her very well, really. Well, that answers that question, I guess. She is uh, Dr. Carrington's assistant. And that was quite the slip of the tongue there. All right, how about Heimlich? He's a real pip. A genuine go-getter, that fellow. He does a jolly good job of guarding the museum. Jolly good. You know, except for that time he let a dagger get stolen. What? How about your accountant? Now, there's an intense personality. He doesn't look it, but there's something seething below the surface. I'm frightfully sure of it. In any case, the fellow is a fine accountant. Well, they do say it's always the quiet ones. Do you know the Countess? She seemed to be uh, interested in you from what we've been hearing. Now there's a lady who truly supports the arts. A real patron, that old girl. Okay. Uh, Steve helped unload your trunk, from what I recall. A stevedore? I'm afraid I don't discourse with proletarian ruffins of that stripe. Is that so? He had some interesting comments about your trunk, though. Especially considering that murder we saw, so... I still think that's suspicious. Any chance to re read the... Tribune since you arrived in New York? I don't read the newspaper, Miss Bow. I find it eternally depressing. That is not going to get better anytime soon. How about the police station? Oh, those poor chaps do their best, I suppose. I suppose. Low fats laundry, I don't think you know. Good heavens, Miss Bow. My houseman does my laundry. I never go to public establishments when I can possibly avoid it. I guess you're too good for that. The docks. I've only been there once, but I found the docks to be full of pugilistic ruffians and parasite-infested rodentia. Okay. Shall be sure to tell Steve that. How about the museum? You are the president, after all. The Lion Decker is simply fantastic, Miss Bow. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. How about New York? Do you like New York, Dr. Carrington? To be frightfully honest, at first I found it to be a bit rough around the edges. But now I'm beginning to see its somewhat primitive charm. Okay. Well, I'm happy us primitives could amuse you. Speakeasies? Miss Bow, I wouldn't be caught dead in one of those nocturnal dens of iniquity. It's a nice term. Den of iniquity. Hmm. Anything to say about our notebook? I dare say it's a bit forward for you to go about writing things about people in that little notebook of yours, Miss Bow. Some people cherish their privacy. It is literally my job. The magnifying glass. I see you want to get a good look at our displays, Miss Bow. I have to respect that. Yes, that's why I have a magnifying glass. Not for investigative purposes, but to look at displays. You got us all figured out, Mr. Carrington. The water glass. What a frightfully dull subject. Water glasses, indeed. Can't say I disagree with him. Let's ask him about his year. Have you found 1926 to be a good year for you, Dr. Carrington? Yes, I would, Miss Bow. Frightfully good. And what 
that you said, Doctor? It's not often that one gets the opportunity to head up the most respected museum in America, Miss Bow. No, I can't say I've ever had that opportunity, so... How about this burglary? What do you make of the theft of the dagger, Dr. Carrington? It's simply beastly. What is the world coming to when crepuscular ruffians can invade a museum like Visigoths? Do you have any idea who could have done such a thing? Not at all. But if I did, I'd be tempted to teach the brute a lesson. I'm sure you would. You know anything about Egyptology? Egyptology is all quite the fashion now, Miss Bow. But it's been a serious science for many years. I can recommend a number of fine books if you're interested. I'm not quite that interested, I don't think. Anyway... That takes care of this little group. Now, it is actually possible to um, eavesdrop on a number of conversations, and we will have to do that. However, I would generally recommend making sure you talk to everybody in all of the groups before you start doing that, because as soon as you do, people start moving around, and it makes it a pain to keep track of where everyone is. So, I'm going to talk to everyone first. Let's start on the left. Let's see what we have here. This is the western portion of the Lion Decker Museum Rotunda. Apparently so. More buffet tables. It's a buffet table loaded with food. And more semi-happy partygoers. It's a happy partygoer. Oh no, wait, this one's fully happy. It's a happy party goer. Interesting. It's a ha They're all happy. It's a happy party goer. People we're actually interested in are in the middle here. Let's look at the decor though. This is the western This is Okay, can't look at the plants here. This is the What's this? It's a fine column of rare black travertine marble quarried in Nepal. We saw that description. How about this vase? It's an alcove occupied by a very impressive urn that contains the ashes of the deceased architect of the Lion Decker Museum, Arvin Slatherlord Loudermilk III. The extra-large size urn had to be specially built to accommodate Loudermilk's massive ego. I didn't know that took up space. Also, Arvin Slatherlord Loudermilk? Jesus Christ, who came up with these names. Anyway, here are the people that we actually want to talk to. You see a tall Irish gentleman with red hair who acts like a cop. Maybe because he is one. That is Detective O'Reilly, of course. A severe, conservative, middle-aged woman with an intelligent look in her eye. Not someone we've met before. You see a rotund, ruddy-complexioned man in affairs. Despite his bulk, he moves with dignity and grace. Well, we've seen one person in affairs, and he was talking to Dr. Carter coming off the boat. Let's talk to O'Reilly first. How are you, Detective O'Reilly? Just fine, Lassie. You're looking lovely this evening. Well, he seems a lot more friendly. And of course, Laura likes to block our ability to click on him easily. Still, we need to question him as well. We did not get the chance to do so before in the police station, so let's do so now. Now there's a man who doesn't know his head from a hole in the ground. Sure and Bigora, anyone who'd allow his paper to print letters criticizing the police farce is downright addled. Um, sure. Dr. Carter. That fella is just too big for his britches, that's all I have to say. Someone ought to take him down a notch or two. I'm not gonna disagree with you there. Dr. Carrington. He's got too many brains, that one. He thinks he's better than us all. Uh, I would say that's more Dr. Carter than Dr. Carrington. 
How about d himself? Why, that's me, silly girl. Detective Ryan Hanrahan O'Reilly, at your service. Yes, I know it's you. Can you please stop doing that? How about Rube? I think you know him. He's the wee pest who likes to hang around the station house. In fact, I thought he was supposed to cover this so-called event. Oh well, no big loss. They gave it to us instead. For some reason. How about Low Fat? That man is a few cards short of a full deck, but he always presses me pants, just like me sainted mother used to do. I guess he's more impressed with the laundry service than Dr. Carter. How about John Bow, fellow police officer, after all? I think I've heard of your father, over in New Orleans, isn't he, lass? Uh, they say he was pretty good for one of those southern boys. Um, nice backhand that compliment there. How about Ziggy? That man is a human weasel. Stay away from him, lassie. That's pretty, that's pretty accurate, I guess. Dr. Miklos. That woman is downright unnatural, Miss Laura. I'd stay away from her if I were you. She keeps asking me if I've got any scars, don't you know? Okay, sounds like a nice person then. How about Yvette? She seemed to like you. Now there's a lovely girl. A real lady, don't you know? No, I don't know. Care to elaborate? Um, Wolf Heimlich, the security guard. He's not much of a security guard, if you're asking me. How could I trust a man who allowed a thief to waltz right in here and steal one of the exhibits if he didn't do it himself? He hasn't even got an alibi for the night of the burglary, since he was here alone. Now that is interesting. It is true that Heimlich makes a good suspect, considering the nature of the burglary. Let's not jump to conclusions, though. How about Ramsey's Niger? I don't like that wee fella. Think he's light in his loafers, don't you know? Uh, sure, if you say so. The Countess. Now there's a slippery old bat. If she's royalty, then I'm Rudolph Valentino. Are you? I don't think you are, so I'm going to guess she's not royalty. Does she claim to be royalty? I guess she is a countess, I suppose. Um, how about Steve? He seems nice enough, but I wouldn't trust anyone who works on the docks. They're pretty rough company for a wee lass like you. Steve seemed pretty nice, to be honest. I think that does not really apply to him, from what we've seen. All right, what do you think of the Tribune? Considering what you thought of Augustini, I don't think you like it very much. The Tribune is a hotbed of yellow journalism, young lady. You should find yourself a better place to work. Have you considered being a secretary? Detective O'Reilly, the Tribune is a fine upstanding paper. And no, I don't want to be a secretary. But it would be none of your business if I did. Temper, temper, missy. I thought you reporters were supposed to stay objective. <laughs> objective doesn't mean without opinions or loyalties, detective. Well, all I have to say is I'd like to see you in the middle of a catfight, lassie. You'd win, claws down. O'Reilly's such a class act. I'm sure Laura would just love to be a secretary after spending years studying journalism at Tulane. How about his place of work? New York's police force truly is the finest in the world, and don't you forget it, lassie. I think you might be biased. How about low fat laundry? They're pretty good. They always put just enough starch in me shirts. Tell that to Dr. Carter. The docks? 
The docks are dangerous places, Lassie, infested with as many cutthroats as there are rats. I'd stay away from there if I were you. Well, I don't have any reason to go back there, so... Don't worry. The museum. It's all right if you like that sort of thing. I think it's a waste of time myself. I'd rather be down at the pub knocking one back with me buddies. I don't doubt that. Wait, is that legal? Do you like living in New York, Detective O'Reilly? Bigora, yes, girl. Tis truly the land of opportunity. Just look at me. Um, care to elaborate? I guess not. Um, how about speakeasies? Mark my words, lassie. I'll have every one of those dins of iniquity closed up by the end of this year. More people using the term den of iniquity. Do you have anything to say about our notebook? Oh, you've got a little notebook. Isn't that cute? Well, if you solve the mystery of the missing letter opener, we'll make you an honorary police girl. <laughs> uh, well, the dagger might be capable of opening letters. I'm not sure if I would quite call it that. Or is that not what he meant? Magnifying glass? So, do you suppose you're gonna find lots of important clues with your little magnifying glass, Missy? Uh, let me know if you find anything important. <laughs> I'll have you know I solved the murder case with a monocle instead of a magnifying glass, so there. The water glass? Do you always carry a water glass around, Lassie? Were you lost in a desert as a girl? Again. I'm not clear what use a water glass would be in a desert, as opposed to, you know, a bottle or something containing water. Detective O'Reilly, has 1926 been a good year for you? Oh, most definitely, lass. I've put away more criminals this year than you'll ever see in your whole life. Hmm. That makes it both a bad year and a good year, doesn't it, Detective? I mean... If there were that many criminals on the loose to begin with, we must be in some sort of crime wave. You see it your way, lassie, and I'll see it mine. I'm kind of with uh, Laura there. Alright, you've kind of already told us about the burglary, but never hurts to ask again. If you ask me, missy, they're blowing the whole thing out of proportion. Bigora, you'd think that something important had been stolen. You don't consider a priceless Egyptian artifact to be important? Listen, girlie, if I chased down every petty theft that occurred within the nastier segments of the population, I'd be working 30 hours a day. I would hardly call the Lion Decca Museum a nasty segment of the population, Mr. O'Reilly. And if you're referring to our Egyptian visitors, shame on you. And don't call me girly. By me father's whiskers, you're a fiery one, Miss Laura. All right, I won't call you girly, little lassie. That is not much better, to be honest. I don't think he knows anything about Egyptology. Do you know anything about Egyptology, Detective O'Reilly? Enough to know it's a bloody waste of time. Sifting through all those old bones and rotting tombs. Better to let the dead rest, don't you know? Sure. You sound like such a cultured man. Alright. We'll move on to um, the next person in our group in the next video.